At some point you decided, I've done a lot in academics, I, I'm going to actually go into government. And I'm going to, for better or for worse, you decided I'm going to go into government, and we'll ask you a little bit about your experience with that. Um, you went to work in the Bush administration uh, on the heading the Council of Economic Advisors. First off, what possessed you to do that? And I choose that word purposely. Um, well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, uh, I had the opportunity to do it once before and uh, declined. Uh, I didn't want to go to government. Uh, it was never my uh, goal in life. I always wanted to be an academic. In fact, uh, I pride myself on having come back to academia after leaving government, which isn't that common. Uh, and that's because academics is really my love. Um, but when it came up the second time, I felt that I should do it for a couple of reasons. One was, uh, you know, the personal reasons. I thought, well, you know, at this stage in my career, spending a couple of years in government is probably going to be more interesting and more valuable to me than writing one or two more papers. But then there, there really was a public service aspect to it. Um, at the time, you know, I kind of thought about it and said, well, you know, if I you know, so your country's asking you to do something for them. And I actually did feel that that was an important thing to, to consider. And uh, so I, I decided to do it. I mean, these jobs are, are wonderful jobs. They're, it's a, an incredible privilege to have a job like that. But there's also a great deal of sacrifice that goes with it, financial sacrifice for one thing, but mostly personal in terms of family. You're away from home. You're disrupted from your normal life. And so it, it is costly. And it was something that I, I considered pretty seriously before I did it, but I'm glad I did. And, uh, um, you know, just through chance, I was there probably at the single most important time ever uh, for the Council of Economic Advisors because we lived through the financial crisis at that time, and um, that was a big deal. So it was probably the time that the CEA was uh, most involved in, econo in, in policy, not economic policy, most involved in policy in its entire existence. What's the most important thing an economist brings? to the White House or to policy making in general? I would say um, hard-nosed logic. Uh, and, uh, and what I mean by hard-nosed logic is not that the other people in government aren't logical. They certainly are. And, and by the way, one of the things that, uh, just an aside, one of the things I discovered when I went to government was how brilliant, and I mean really brilliant, my colleagues were. It's not easy to get those jobs. The people who serve at the highest level in the White House are very capable people. And uh, these were just tremendously powerful thinkers. So it wasn't, wasn't that they didn't think hard about things. But the way economists think about things is really quite different. We're very disciplined in our logic. I think the fact that we have to write down models, kind of coming back to what you were talking about earlier, when you s solve for an equilibrium, you know, you say, where does this stuff really lead you? Uh, is it an enforced way to think about things that other people don't do? So I would find myself in staff meetings, you know, where people would make statements that were seemingly smart, but actually a little bit loose and not having thought these things through. And I would say, well, wait a minute, you know, what about this? And, you know, have you thought about this? And where is that going to lead us? And even when we weren't talking about any specific uh, issue, just kind of general discussion, I found that was the thing that I probably contributed most to those meetings. Um, obviously, you know, when we got into specific issues, uh, the economic way of thinking about things was very important. Um, many examples of, of using just basic principles like cost-benefit analysis, which to us is kind of second nature. You know, you always trade the costs off against the benefits. You ask, you know, is the present, expected present value of this thing returns greater than the cost of the investment? I mean, it's kind of a standard thing to do. Uh, most people don't think about it that way, but if you do think about a problem that way, and you say, okay, let's write it down. Let's kind of classify, uh, the, quantify the benefits, classify those things that are benefits, those things are costs. How do they stack up against one another? That kind of just rigorous thinking about a problem is, um, you know, is unusual in the world. And uh, I think it's something that economists are very good at doing. To some extent, it seems to me you almost jumped ahead, though, going to cost-benefit analysis, because it seems to me one of the most fundamental things economists brings to the table is thinking about the alternatives. That is, before yeah. you can even do cost-benefit analysis in a sensible way, 
you have to specify what the options are. It's not enough to say, I don't like the world the way it is. Oh, there's a private market outcome, didn't come out the way I would hope it would. I got to say, well, what's the alternative? And is that alternative better? And that's where the cost benefit analysis comes in. And, but in my experience, one of the things I've found is that often people don't even think about the alternatives. And I think yeah. maybe cost benefit analysis forces you to do that, but just that part alone, I think, is very important. Thinking about what really, what are the choices we have on the table and a realistic specification of those choices. And I'll come back to what I mean by that in a bit. But what's your reaction to that? Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. You know, so economists are usually thought of as being pretty conservative. And I, I don't mean politically conservative, although that's, that's probably true too. Even, you know, even academic economists by academic standards tend to be conservative. And, and wh why is it that they're conservative? And I think it's exactly for the reason that you're just saying. It's that, that there's no free lunch that everything has, has a cost, there are always trade-offs, and the, and the issue is specifying what the trade-offs are. Sometimes the costs are pretty subtle. That's why we use the concept of opportunity cost. It's not always the, the case that the cost just jumps right out at you. You gotta think about, think hard about what is it that you're giving up when you do something like this. And so I think you're right when you say cost-benefit analysis kind of uh, actually jumps ahead because the, the first thing that you do when, when you're an economist, you point out that this, this stuff isn't, you know, isn't free. I like the way you said it, you know, you say, you know, it's, people always say, oh, well, you know, it just isn't fair or it just isn't. Whenever you hear anybody use the word just, okay, that tells you they haven't thought through it, okay, because that's kind of a way to, to sort of- Shortcut. To shortcut, it's to jump to the conclusion without giving you a logical argument. And, and usually it's wrong. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I agree with you completely. I think that's, that's one of the things that, you know, economists taught us. By the way, you know, I mean, we always attribute the, the no free lunch statement to Milton. I don't know if, it, if someone before him said it, but, you know, I always think of Milton as the guy who, who taught us that, that principle. But it was always inherent in, in his thinking. You know, I knew Milton for, you know, 35 years and, and uh, in all my experience with him. Uh, he always had this, this notion that, you know, he'd say, now be careful. I remember, you know, that was one of the expressions he always used. And basically what he meant when he said be careful is, you know, you're, you're going too fast. You're not thinking hard enough about what the costs are. You're not thinking hard enough about what the trade-offs are and what you're giving up to do this. And you're assuming, you're making assumptions about what can be done without thinking rigorously about what, what actually uh, would be needed to make that occur.